that may be considered too disturbing or mature for some audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. For those sticking around, you've been warned. <laughs> Dark greetings to all you loyal listeners across the globe, and all you fresh new initiates alike. Nathan Shelton here, the creator of the Frightmare Theater podcast. You may not know this, but creating a high-quality horror anthology audio drama series is a monstrous undertaking. If you love the audacious audio atrocities we unleash here at Arcane, we urge you to help us share the screams by rating and reviewing Frightmare Theater on your preferred listening app and sharing on social media. For those like-minded horror hounds out there who are interested in supporting our little show financially, we welcome you to join our undead family on Patreon. Or, for those fearing that monthly commitment, buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Frightmare. Every dollar goes directly to our monthly production costs and keeping our talented writers, performers, and musicians fed and let out of the dungeons occasionally. Find out more about our show and the deviant minds that create it at FrightmareTheater.com. Oh, (laughs) it's feeding time already. Well, gotta run. Enjoy tonight's terrifying episode. The hour has grown late, and shadows lurk around every corner. Townsfolk along the seaport have reported strange, shadowy figures that seem to emerge directly from the high tide last night. Authorities are baffled as little evidence has surfaced to support these claims. Save for the gelatinous, foul-smelling footprints leading from the shoreline directly to the town's storm drain system. Oh well. <laughs> It's most likely neighborhood kids, playing practical jokes. Most likely. And now, loyal listeners, it is time once again to turn down the lights and turn up the terror as we huddle together by candlelight and welcome into our hearts and minds the eternal darkness of Frightmare Theater. Welcome, 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 little beasties, to another illustrious episode of Frightmare Theatre. I am your host, Dr. Necropolis, and... and... (laughs) Wow, 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 what's the matter, Doc? Did your ex-wives finally find you, and you're on the hook for all that alimony? Finally sink in the corporate abandoned you to radio because your looks are so far gone that you can Thank you both for your concern. But no, it's just that... that... (laughs) Here he goes again! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just that my poor pet Skerakeet passed away last night. And this morning was the first time Peter's putrid plume wasn't peering at me from his perch. He was my best friend. (laughs) I I thought I was your best friend. (laughs) If I may, I think I know just the thing to help the good doctor. Announcer! Come on, man. The doc is in rough shape as it is. He doesn't need you coming around, kicking him when he's down. Oh, that I would. Management has produced a special recording for just such an occasion. They are going to start using it for their grief counseling. Since when did management start concerning themselves with the grief of their staff? I'm sure they would be happy to discuss that little comment with you personally, if you'd want to make a formal inquiry. No, I'm good! Well, let's give it a try, at least. 
Whatever it takes to dry out this wet blanket, he's, he's really bringing down the farm. Very well. Al, would you be so kind as to roll this as tonight's story? Agnes, if you'd get back on the keys and set the mood, please. Thank you. Oh, and you, loyal listeners, without further ado, we bring to you tonight's haunting tale. Relax, sit back, and listen to the soothing serenade we call Song of the Siren. Speed it up. I want to get this over with. Got to get back in time for supper. Slow down, Willie. We'll get there. We'll get there. We're professionals, remember? You'd better be. I also want this finished as quickly as possible. This necklace must be something exquisite. Who did you say she was? An old acquaintance. You didn't have to come, mister. You never did tell us your name. Mr. Macy, not that you need to know my name, or any of the names of your produce, as you call them. Sorry about that, Mr. Macy. Slip of the tongue. Willie and I do take pride in our work. We do a lot of good for the world. You know that big discovery over at the medical building? The, uh... What was it, Willie? First, the blood transfusion. That's right. It was in all the papers. That was all because of us. Too bad you couldn't take the credit. Yeah, too bad. We could make a lot of famous anatomists lose precious sleep if either of us were caught. Uh, not you, of course. But this is a special case. <laughs> well, that'll put a jump at our step. Shine your lantern over here, Arthur. I can't see a damn thing. Now, before I forget, you got a story lined out for when you get back. You said you don't live too far from here. I'll take the long way back to my house. My housekeeper will have locked the front door thinking I'm upstairs asleep. Before I left, I cracked open my bedroom window upstairs so I can climb back inside unnoticed in case she's still awake. And no one knows you've gone out tonight? No. I have very few contacts. Very thorough. Ah, oh, getting close now. I can see the stones. All right. This is where you come in, Mr. Macy. The sooner you find it, the sooner we take off. Matthews. Carrington. Farrell, bring some light over here. Oh, Grady. Morris. Here. Here it is. Cora Alberici. Died 1825. Hell, she'll be much too far gone. Are you sure you want to be here? Just you? do it. No questions. And this is where we come in. Hold my lantern, Mr. Macy. What are you doing that for? Uh, uh, we throw the dug-up soil on this canvas, you see, so when we put it back, there's not as much loose dirt. Uh, uh, it's less conspicuous that way. Oh, this'll be a cinch. You see, our peak seasons are in the winter. The clients want the freshest ones we can find, and the cold keeps them that way. But the grounds are frozen solid, so it makes digging a chore. Since it's summertime, the ground will just slice right open like hot cherry pie. All right. You want me to start digging, Arthur? Or do you? Or do you? I'll hold the lantern. <sighs> well, it's unusual having someone here who knew the produce. Uh, I mean, uh, the deceased, while we do our work. Just thought that making the first cut might be set of metal to you. I tell you, I didn't know her. Willie, just start digging. Here, take your shovel. And our buddy Tim usually works a patrol, but seeing as we didn't need him since you're here, that'll be your job. Now, why don't you just take a few steps that way, Mr. Macy, and keep watch? Ever since we resurrectionists have been increasing in number, 
people have become even more vigilant in protecting their dearly beloved's graves. Plus, they made it illegal a few years back, so keep a keen eye. Uh, go on. We don't want to all get caught and go to prison now, do we? Seven years. Seven years. I never wanted it to be here. I prayed so arduously to keep away. My heart is childish, makes to press itself against your motherly breast. My eyes are weak and grieve to look upon your face once again. After you left, I could do nothing but paint portraits of you. Your eyes, your nose, your hands. It didn't matter what part. I tried so hard to even attempt simple landscapes, quaint ponds at sunset, collecting a blizzard of cherry blossoms while a family of delicately down swans glided on the water. But none of these beauties of nature could ever compare to her greatest creation. Your face. Time has since robbed me so greatly of even that supreme pleasure that my will has eroded to the point of mere paralysis. I refuse to paint not only tiresome still lifes, landscapes, and nudes, but also, alas, your image. The near holiness of your beauty seems almost sacrilegious to even attempt recreating without possessing the befitting embodiment of the subject. Anything else is a mere illusion. I forbid to bring my brush to canvas, let alone to even look at those once dear friends who have aided every artist so loyally. With you also went feminine aura, which has left me as nothing but a cold, distant observer, only watching, never dancing. My only wish, if there are such things here on Earth, is merely one last prayer at your altar. My Cora, entombed in her inferior reliquary. Only then will I find the strength to not only paint again, but to also go on living. I grow so tired of possessing nothing but a fading portrait. I desire you, in the flesh, here and now, of the earth, not in it, and not simply in my mind. So, it is with every hope that I will again remember what it was like when you were once alive. Only then, my love, can I, can we truly both survive. Mr. Macy! Mr. Macy! We reached it! He wasn't buried too deep. I hope you didn't pay top price for the burial. Also hope you don't care about the condition of the coffin. We'll have to bust through the lid. I thought you'd want to be here for the grand opening. Are you ready, sir? Mr. Macy? Yes. Open it. in these past seven years. Usually the hair tends cause, but hers is like red ringlets drifting in the sea. Look at how her eyes smile even when they are closed, and her lips were never touched by any color other than her own ruby softness. And the skin... And the skin glows as if it were merely the soft residue of milky mists. You talk like you knew her. Come on, Mr. Macy. Get the necklace and let's get out of here. What? The necklace. The whole reason we're out here. Yes, of course. Careful. Don't hurt her. Got it. Catch, Mr. Macy. I hope it was worth it. Doesn't look too valuable to me. For God's sake. What's happening to her face? Don't look, Mr. Macy. It's the oxygen finally getting to her. She's turning grey. She's dying! Look away, I tell you. If you want to remember that face like you just described it to us, then you won't look back. Willie, shut the lid. Now. Shit. That's the groundskeeper. Take down your lands. 
Well, if there, they ain't... Come on, let's get out of here. This is just our luck. The rain will send him back inside. What about the grave? We can't just leave it open. The dirt will slide down in the hole. Trust me, it'll be a whole lot easier for us to put it back now and look like nothing even happened. William Neal, sneak back in later and take care of everything once it's all stopped raining. Come on, Mr. Mason. You've had your look, now we gotta go. Right. Grab your shovel. All right, let's get out of here. Been a pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Macy. Hope we never meet again. Night. <laughs> oh, God. I repent for what I've done. I'm not sure whether it was for better or worse. But I am certain you understand. For better... Or worse. To see you. Not like the way you looked before. I'm just as beautiful now as the day. As the day. As the day. But you're. But you're dead. face forever. glad that you're all right. I thought I heard you yelling in your sleep last night, but chalked it up to those howling winds from that terrible storm. It must have been. I've never felt better, Doris. Really? You must have been under a pretty deep spell then, considering. That was one of the worst storms I've ever had to sleep through. Ha! <laughs> sleep! The wind was like... Well, you're the artist. How would you have described it? Like... A thousand lost souls, screaming all at once, just so we knew they were still here. Oh, that's it. That's how it was. Just like that. Oh. oh anyways, I'll get something prepared for you. That's quite all right, Doris. It'll be waiting for you in five minutes. Ow, oh, Mr. Aberici? Yes. Usually, I'd have no reason to pry into your comings and goings, but... Seeing as I'm cleaning it up, did you happen to go out last night in the rain? No. No, I didn't. Why? Well, because when I woke up this morning, I noticed that there was mud all around the front door leading to your studio upstairs. I've gotten most of it up there, but still have a ways to go downstairs. You must have gone out. I'd have no reason to, especially in that storm. It makes me think, and I hate to even imagine it, that... Someone may have sneaked in last night while we were asleep. Perhaps a beggar broke in to get out of the rain. You didn't notice anything missing, did you? 
since they lead up to where you do all of your painting. I assumed maybe you'd gotten a flash of inspiration last night. Now that I know that's not the case, I'll check first thing. Good. Oh, and Mr Vaughan is outside trimming the edges. I'll ask him to help me check all the doors and windows once he gets a chance. He's out there, right now? Yes. Said it's better to do it right after a fresh rain. What's the matter? Has he already started with the front edges? I'm not sure. Why? No reason. And you can inspect the footprints for yourself, sir. See what you can make of them. I'll just keep scrubbing if you don't mind. Don't want the dirt to soak in too deeply. Thank you. Muddy footsteps. And up to the front door. How could that be? I'm certain I left my boots outside. <gasps> Good morning, Laszlo. May I come in? Of course. Of course. Good to see you, Richard. Ha! Huh. Is it? I just got out of bed. I'm sure you're not alone in that regard this morning. I only came by to see how you were doing. When I last saw you, I was worried. You appeared even more detached than usual. I wish you could finally find solace, Laszlo. As you know, I was the same when Rebecca died. I couldn't eat, sleep. But then things slowly got brighter. Having Sandra and Philip has helped keep her memory alive, and I know that the closest thing to children for you are your paintings. But... I'm sorry. You've heard this all before. I tend to repeat myself when there's not much left to say in trying to help ease someone's mind. But yet I keep rambling. Anyways... I know you said you've given up, but I found a new admirer of yours, Mrs. Rogers. She's very wealthy and is keen on you doing a commission for her. I told her you hadn't taken any for a while, but she insisted on my asking you. And what is it that she wants? A landscape. People now want pretty things to adorn their homes. And with photography growing in popularity, it's rendered the expense of having portraits done nearly unnecessary. But people do still enjoy color. I know how persuasive you can be. Perhaps you could convince her of having her portrait painted. Not that she's portrait material, but maybe her dog. Her dog. Well, it's a start. <laughs> I can already tell that my news has sparked something in you. Or perhaps the spark was already lit before I got here. I'm not sure. It's as if the storm last night washed something away, cleansed the house of bad thoughts and Lost time. Excellent. Oh, I'm very pleased to hear that. And you have all the time to consider my offer. I do hope you take me up on it. I'm sure she'd pay well, but more importantly, it might get you back on track. And I know how financially taxing keeping a house like this going can be. I'll call on you again tomorrow with more news. Goodbye, Laszlo. Goodbye, friend. Hold on. Have a leak? Sorry. What's all this mud on the floor? A leak? Yes. I believe so. Odd for such a well-built house. Storm must have been more powerful than I thought. No. This can't be from a leak. It looks like the footsteps all the way up to the stairs, I see. Doris suspects someone may have entered the house last night to get out of the rain. I would, too, if I were desperate enough. Thank you for stopping by, Richard. Of course. You will think about what I've said. I will. <laughs> Excellent. Good afternoon, Mr. Alberici, and good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mr. Vaughan. Farewell, Laszlo. Farewell. I'm sure Doris mentioned I'd be coming by to tend the bushes. Yes, she did. Our house is always more respectable, with newly clipped edges, like a face after a fresh trim. You've already finished the front, I see. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sure you'll want to get to the back of the house as well. I'll let you return to your work. Absolutely. By the way, I found these behind the bushes. Surely they couldn't be yours. No, they're not mine. Possibly a beggar's. <laughs> Even a beggar wouldn't want these mud-caked old boots. I'll have a look around the house for anything else they might have left behind. Are you starting a brush fire at the back? 
I, I am, Mr. Alberici. Would you mind throwing those on the fire? Certainly, Mr. Alberici. So I wasn't dreaming. I did leave my shoes outside last night. And where did those tracks come from? Doris? Doris! Yes, sir? Do make sure that Mr. Vaughn checks all the doors and windows before he leaves. I will, sir. And your breakfast is waiting for you in the kitchen. Thank you, Doris. Mr. Collins. Hello, Doris. Come in. And how are you this fine morning? Wonderful. Is Laszlo here? He's been upstairs in his studio all night and morning, painting up a storm. Didn't even come down for breakfast. I thought he seemed more enthusiastic when I saw him yesterday. I'm very glad to hear it. As am I, Mr. Collins. Would you like me to fetch him? I hate to disturb him, but if you could, please. Of course. Mr. Aberici? Mr. Aberici? Mr. Collins is here to see you. Thank you, Doris. I'll be right down. Do you often talk to yourself when you paint? I never noticed it before. The muses are certainly working their magic this time. What do you mean? It sounded like you were having a conversation in there. It was almost as if... I would greatly appreciate it if you wouldn't lurk outside of my door while I'm painting. But I wasn't lurking, Mr... I'll be right down. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Alberici. Hello, Laszlo. Have I got great news for you? Oh, what are you doing up here? I'm sorry. Doris said you've been painting all night, and I was anxious to have a look at the progress. I work better when I know the painting hasn't been viewed yet. When it's finished, then you can see it. Fine with me. Whatever it is you're doing, keep it up. By the way, I mentioned to Mrs. Rogers that you were interested in painting her a landscape. She was thrilled. I'll schedule you a meeting with her as soon as possible. Very good. Now I must get back to painting. <laughs> I won't deny you that. I apologize for my terseness earlier. I suppose... No need to apologize, my friend. Let me show you to the door. Now, you will be sure to let me know a time for the meeting. The sooner the better, and... Laszlo, who are those two men? They were here when I arrived. They seem to be looking over here very strangely. I'm not sure. I'll have a talk with them after you go. Good day, Richard. Goodbye. What are you two doing here? How did you find where I lived? Well, it was easy, Mr. Alberici. Tell me what you want, then get out of here quickly. Come with me to the back of the house. Whatever you have to say, say it. Something curious has happened at the gravesite, Mr. Aberich. No one discovered what we've done. No, no. no. We covered our tracks. Don't you worry. No one will ever find out. What then? Well, after the rain stopped the other night, we went back to the cemetery to finish our work. We were just about to cover the casket when we noticed that, well... What? What happened to her? She wasn't there. What have you done with her? If you've turned to another scientist... No, no, never. We'd have never done that. Besides, we couldn't have used the corpse anyways. Maybe we could have taken a hand or a skull, but the flesh was far too decomposed to be of use to any surgeon. So what we're saying is... Uh... What you're saying is that someone else has taken her? 
Apparently, yes. But like we said, you covered everything over. The only people that know we were there is you and Arthur and me and uh, whoever got there before us. Get out of here. I never want to see either of you body snatchers again. <clears throat> Resurrectionists. Your ghouls. Now get out. Hold on, hold on. Don't you think we ought to get a bit of a raise for coming all the way over here and telling you? We didn't have to do that, you know. Our necks are on the line just as much as yours. And, uh, speaking of necks, we could just take that pretty piece of jewellery you snatched from around Mrs. Alberici's. I'm sure it was worth more than it looked, since you were so intent on getting it back. The necklace is worthless. Her face was the real gold. Here, that's a hundred. Take it and get out of here now! Thank you, Mr. Macy. And a good morning to you. Good morning. My God. My God, what have I done? Mr. Alberici, come quick! What is it, Doris? I was putting some rat poison up in the attic when I noticed that. Mrs. Alberici's wedding dress is missing. Missing? Why would it be missing? I don't know, but it's missing just the same. Curious things are happening in this house. If someone did break in the other night, then they could have gone off with it. But of all the things to take... You should have been more watchful. I know it's troubling, Mr. Alberici, but... I'll be painting all day. Don't disturb me. I won't, Mr. Alberici. I'll... I'll... Just set to tray of food outside your door at dinner time. Don't even do that. Goodbye. Bye. Cora? Cora? Yes. It was you. The dress. Oh, Cora. Come to me. This is wonderful, Laszlo. I'm sure Mr. Lohman will simply adore the painting of the Colosseum he's commissioned you to do. I can't wait to see it. And Mrs. Rogers was ecstatic once I told her you'd agreed upon doing her portrait as well. So pleased, in fact, that she informed all of her wealthy friends about you. Now they all want paintings, landscapes, portraits. You're starting to build a reputation again. I have so many clients lined up that you'll soon be able to leave this town and maybe, hopefully, put the past behind you. Why would I want to do that? Everything I could ever want is in this house. There's nothing more that I could ever want in the world. I'm painting again. I've never felt more cheerful or alive. You're definitely painting again, that's true. It's also true that your mood has changed, but it's not cheerful. Not at all. Uh, you're more on edge, m more suspicious of things, and of people. <laughs> Artists always seem to have a touch of irritability in them. I suppose you're right, but I hope that all this work isn't putting too much of a strain on you. Whatever success you may be having, it isn't worth the detriment to your health. You don't look well. Are you eating? When I can. Thank you very much for the news. I must return to my work now. I understand. Good day. Good day. What was that, Laszlo? Are you speaking to me? Never mind. I'm going now. <laughs> Doris? What's the matter? Oh, don't mind me, Mr. Collins. How could I when you're crying? Tell me what's happened. Mr. Alberici's... he's letting me go. <laughs> Impossible. You're too important to him. What reason could he have for firing? He says he needs his peace and quiet. Having someone else in the house is too much of a distraction. Distraction? How's he going to keep this place clean? How, how is he going to eat? Whether I'm here or not won't make any difference in his eating. I've taken tray after tray up to his room for nearly two weeks now and he barely eats a thing. 
I don't know how he keeps going with all the work he does. I hardly ever see him come out of a studio. I haven't even needed to change his sheets because his bed's never been slept in. It's like taking care of a petulant child. And there's something else that's strange. What is it? Every now and then, when I'm upstairs, I swear I hear him talking to himself. Yes. I heard it too. What's even more odd is that it sounds like there's two voices. I've even thought that maybe he was keeping someone in there, but they'd have to eat somehow and the food is never touched. There's not even a window in that room, so the only way to get out would be to come through the front door. I would have seen them. That is strange. When are you leaving? Early this evening. My things are almost packed. Perhaps it's just as well. I'm a Christian woman, Mr Collins. That's why I'm afraid there's something that's taken over. Not only Mr Avaricci's mind, but also his soul. And it's not just him. There have been strange things happening for a while now that I can't even explain to you, Mr Collins. It's... Oh, it's as if an evil entity has taken hold of the entire house. The place reeks of death. That's why I'm setting these mouse traps. I thought it was the least I could do before I leave. Why are you doing that? I've noticed a foul stench for about a week now. I don't know where it's coming from. I'm intent on getting rid of it. I thought it might be rats or some kind of animal that's gotten trapped in the walls and died. Haven't you noticed it, Mr Collins? I had but I'd have thought that Laszlo would have mentioned it to you, and I hated to bring it up myself. Well, I'm sorry to hear you're leaving. I deal with many wealthy patrons who are always looking for help. I'll pass your name along to them. I'm positive you'll find work soon. Thank you, Mr. Collins. All the best to you, Doris. And don't worry about Mr. Alberici. I'll come back later tonight to check on him. That will make me feel much better. Laszlo! Laszlo, are you there? It's Richard! I'm getting soaked out here! Laszlo? I'm letting myself in. Are you upstairs? I'm coming up to your studio, Laszlo. Are you in there painting? If you are, then I'm proud of you. But I do hope to steal you away for just a bit. I want to talk with you. I'm coming in. Laszlo? My God, that smell! Look at all these paintings. What have you been working on, Laszlo? Cora. Beautiful Cora. I'd forgotten how beautiful she was. Wait a minute. They're all of Cora. There must be 15, 30? God, 50 portraits. All of Cora. Are you downstairs? Answer me! Laszlo? Are you talking to me? Answer me, please! You're beginning to scare me, Laszlo. Now answer me. Right now. Do you hear me? Laszlo? Laszlo, no! 
she's come back to me, Richard. Look, Cora's come back. I rescued her from the mud, plucked her from the earth like a flower. A marigold. Do you know what marigolds stand for? Passion, creativity, the muse. And that's what she is, my muse. I'm painting her portrait again. Did you see them? Those footprints, they were yours. This can't be happening. I'll never let her go. She's not just in my mind now. I have her once again. In the flesh. This can't be real. Now you'll never die. Not as long as you're here, Cora. Not as long as I have your beautiful body captured in paint and captured in my arms. You'll never leave me. Never again. Never again. Laszlo, put it down. You're dancing with a corpse! Doctor, feeling any better? Hmm? Oh, yes, an answer. Thank you. It, nothing turns a frown upside down faster than a good story about undying love and devotion. <laughs> it, undying? Hmm. Love and... Uh, oh! In a completely unrelated note, uh, I've just had the most wonderful idea of how to get over the loss of my beloved Peter. Oh, Jesus. No, no, just, just wait a minute, Doc. You better not be thinking what I think you are. And that's all the time we have for tonight, little beasties. Remember, it's never too late to hug your loved ones close. Never too late. Doc, sometimes... Dead is better. Until next time. <laughs> The Frightmare Theatre Podcast is brought to you by Arcane, where your nightmares melt in your mouths and not in your hands. Tonight's radio theatre presentation, entitled Song of the Siren, was written and directed by Andrew McMurtry and featured the voice talents of Spencer Tilly, Heath Hill House, Andrew McMurtry, Nathan Shelton, and Lisa Marie Murphy. The Frightmare Theatre theme and supplemental music is created by the terrifyingly talented Chris Porcelli and Alison Johnson and can be found along with other haunting scores at crisposellipiano.com. Be sure to stalk Frightmare Theatre on social media and subscribe to the Frightmare Theatre podcast via Verbal, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, YouTube, or your favorite listening app. All previous petrifying episodes of Frightmare Theatre can be unearthed at frightmaretheaterpodcast.com. We so deeply wish to thank you for listening and hope you taste the sweet, dark decadence of horror radio theater with us again next time for an all-new episode. Until then, I am the announcer wishing you pleasant dreams.